As I make this video, we're only about a month away from Apple releasing iOS 18, which will come with lots of new features for your iPhone. But I think there are still loads of things that the average iPhone owner doesn't realize their phone can do right now on iOS 17. So in this video, I'm going to share with you 10 iPhone tips that I think most iPhone owners don't know about. Okay, let's get into it. Because I live in the UK, I know that it's never going to be that long before it starts raining, which is really frustrating if I want to figure out when's the best time of the day to walk our dog. Now, I do use the weather app on my iPhone, but I tend to find that the conditions charts at the top of the app are really hit and miss, especially when it comes to rain. I find that a much more accurate way of finding out what's going to be going on over the course of the next hour or the next few hours is to tap the map button in the bottom left corner of the weather app, then zoom in on the area that you'd like to take a look at. In the upper right of the screen, there is a layers button. And if you tap on that, you can choose to view precipitation or rainfall, temperature, air quality or wind. So if I choose precipitation, I can now get an idea of whether or not any rain is expected in this location over the course of either the next hour or if I tap down on the option at the bottom of the screen over the next 12 hours. For both of these time frames, I can press the play button and it will give me a representation of the weather that's due in. There are loads of really useful long press features in the control center. I just think that most people probably don't know about them all. For example, if you long press on the torch or flashlight, you can choose from four brightness settings. But the really cool thing about this is that if you then tap out of this and just tap the button on and off like normal, it will remember the brightness setting that you chose and keep it until you change it. This is helpful if you find that it usually comes on too bright. If you tap and hold on the calculator, you can copy the last result to your clipboard. If you tap and hold on the camera, you can choose the type of camera setting that you'd like to use when the app opens, like a selfie or a portrait selfie, for example. If you tap and hold on the screen recording button, you can choose to start a screen recording with your microphone enabled, which will pick up your voice as well as anything that you capture on screen. You can also begin a broadcast using apps like Zoom. If you tap and hold on the Shazam button, you can see your music recognition history and tapping on a song will take you to the Shazam page for that particular song. If you long press on the notes button, you can choose to scan in a document as well as begin a note with a new checklist or photo. If you long press on the wallet button, you can view your default card in your wallet as well as see the last transaction. If you long press on the timer button, you'll get a sliding scale that you can use to set a timer from one minute up to two hours just by sliding your finger up and down. And finally, if you long press on sound recognition, you can select a specific sound to have your phone listen out for without having to go into settings. If you're in any app where you find yourself scrolling down for a really long period of time and you suddenly realize that you'd like to get back to the top of the screen, instead of scrolling all the way back up, you can tap anywhere in the status bar at the top of the iPhone screen and your phone will very quickly scroll you right back to the beginning. And the great thing is I've been able to get this to work in every single app that I've tried it with. In the Messages app, I'm sure you already know that if you tap the plus button to the left of the Message Compose window, you can then tap on Photos to access your photo library and send an image. There is a quicker way of doing this. Just tap and hold on the plus button for just a second. The photo library will appear immediately underneath the composition window, skipping the previous steps where you have to choose the Photos app manually. Also, on the topic of saving time in the Messages app, if you raise your phone to your ear while in a Messages chat, you'll hear a beep and you can immediately begin talking. This will automatically record a voice memo. As soon as you're done, just pull the phone away from your ear and press the send button to send your recorded voice message. If you go into the Photos app and tap on Albums at the bottom of the screen, there's a section called People, Pets and Places. In the People and Pets section, this will show you thumbnail images of all the people that your phone has identified. I'm going to tap on the image of our dog and use her as an example for this, but what I'm about to show you would work for people as well. You'll be taken to this particular person's page, or dog's page, within your Photos app. You can scroll through and view all the photos and videos that your phone has identified with this particular person or pet. The image at the top of this screen is the key photo, the image that you see in the thumbnail on the previous screen. If you tap the ellipsis menu in the upper right corner of the screen, you can choose zoom in on face. This will then take all the images of this particular pet or person and zoom in so that you can see just their face in more detail. If you like one of these images, you can then tap and hold on that image for just a second and choose make key photo. This, if you then scroll up, you can see will replace the key photo that you had previously. 
If you go into settings and choose battery, you can find some useful information about your phone's battery. Tap on battery health to see the current chemical health. The maximum capacity field shows the total capacity of your battery at this moment. If it's 100%, it means that all of your battery is fully available on a full charge. A lower number indicates that your battery has aged chemically over time, which is perfectly normal by the way, but it does impact the capacity. For example, if it shows 90%, it means you have 90% of your normal battery capacity available on every full charge. Something to be aware of, Apple will replace your battery for you if this number is below 80%. There is a cost involved in this, unless you took out Apple Care Plus with your phone, in which case Apple will usually do this for free. Jump back a page and scroll down to battery usage. Here you can check your battery usage for the last 24 hours or the last 10 days. Below these charts, one showing battery level and the other showing activity, you can view battery usage by app or activity. The battery usage by app over a 10 day period is really useful. It helps identify vampire apps, which are apps that consume a lot of power without you realizing it. For instance, I discovered that the Sonos app, which I use to control our house speakers, drains a lot of battery, even though I only use it a handful of times a day. With this information, you can decide how to manage your apps better. In general, you shouldn't ever need to force close apps down, as your phone manages this pretty well, but armed with this information, you might choose to force close certain apps when you're done using them. To do this, swipe up and hold on your screen for a moment, then swipe to find the app that you want to close and swipe up on that app to force quit. That last tip was all about making the most of useful data. And on that same topic, I've been learning all about data analysis thanks to Brilliant, who are sponsoring today's video. Brilliant simplifies complex topics like maths, data analysis, programming, and AI, helping you learn by doing. So when I was learning about data analysis, for example, the platform had me working with examples of real world data from sources like Starbucks, X and Spotify, looking for trends and learning to make better informed decisions. And this is great because learning by playing with concepts like this is believed to be six times more effective than learning simply by watching a video. And the great thing is Brilliant has thousands of lessons just like this across a wide range of topics. It helps build critical thinking skills through problem solving rather than mere memorization, allowing you to gain deeper knowledge and become a better thinker overall. And because of how convenient Brilliant is, you can learn at a pace and schedule that suits you. I've created my own daily learning habit with a spare five or 10 minutes every day, time that I probably would have spent doom scrolling anyway, so this feels like a much better use of my time. If this sounds good to you, you can enjoy everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash proper honest tech or following the link in the description of this video, which also gets you a lifetime 20% off the premium account. So there's really no better time to join the more than 10 million existing members and take your knowledge to the next level. You can use the health app to log information like your weight or blood pressure, for example. And I talked about that in my recent video all about the health app. The problem is it takes a lot of button presses to get to the specific part of the app that you need to get to in order to register your information. Thankfully, there is a much quicker way and that's to use Siri. But before you can do that, you'll need to enable this feature. So go to settings, scroll down and choose health, then tap into data access and devices and then choose Siri. Ensure that access health data is enabled. Then when you want to record a data point, you would access Siri and say, record my blood pressure as 100 over 70, for example, or record my weight as 73 kilograms. You can do this for a whole host of data points and you can access all of that data in the health app. By the way, if you prefer to have content like this in a written format, there's a PDF version of this video complete with screenshots and you can access it along with all other PDFs I've created, plus future ones for just $5 a month or by itself as a one-time payment. You can either scan the QR code that you can see on screen or follow the link in the description of this video to learn more. If you have multiple apps open on your iPhone and you wanna switch between them, you probably use the app switcher, which you access by swiping up from the bottom of the screen and holding for just a second, then swiping through to find the app that you want. There is another way that you can do this. If you swipe from the dead center right at the bottom of the screen to either the left or the right, you can swipe between your open apps. Also, if you're in Safari, if you swipe left and right on the address bar, which you can see I've got at the bottom of my screen here, this allows you to swipe between open Safari tabs. If you do this all the way to the right, past your last open tab, it will take you to a new blank tab. 
You probably already know that you can drag and drop an image from one part of your iPhone into another, like dragging an image from Safari directly into Notes or an email, for example. But did you know that you can also do this with URLs? For example, if there's a link to something in a Safari article, and I already know that I wanna drag that particular article into a note, I can just tap and hold on the URL, then quickly move my finger or thumb to lift it from the screen, then use my other hand to navigate to my open notes, and drop the URL right in. Or if you're already reading the article that you would like to drag across instead, simply do the exact same thing, but do it from the address bar. This will recognize that you're trying to move the article that you're currently reading, and it works in exactly the same way. I'm sure you already know that if you're using the calculator and you make a mistake, you can simply swipe in the numbers at the top of the calculator's screen to remove the last digit. This can be really helpful if you're in the middle of a calculation and you wanna correct a mistake without having to start over. But did you know that if you long press on the calculator icon, either on your home screen or in the control center, you can copy the last result to your clipboard. So if you know that you were working on something earlier, but you forgot to make a note of it and you've since closed the calculator app, this would be how you would get that figure back. So there you go, 10 iPhone tips that I reckon most iPhone owners don't know about. What do you think? Any tips that you think should have been included here but weren't? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.